Swim Things in Blue Springs, your one-stop shop for all things swim. Pools, spas, patio furniture, swimwear, and accessories. Visit them in Blue Springs or at www.swimthings.com. And Richard came out and did what Richard kind of did a lot, just kind of didn't step in, waited until the set was over and came back over. To, I said, why didn't you come over? He goes, oh, it's going good. He said, I, want to, I never want to interrupt the flow of a good workout, ever. I, ah, that's going to be Bill Shalley's coaching swimming one-on-one right there. Yes. Never interrupt the flow of a good workout or a hell of a meet. You just don't do that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Journey. I have myself, Jean Madison. Um, I'm one of the assistant swimming coaches here at TCU. And our guest today is Bill Shalley. And um, recently, you have retired from the head swimming coach at Blue Springs. Um, And I want to welcome you on The Journey. And so how are you, coach? How's everything going? Gene, everything's great. Uh, it's been a, a few years, but uh, yeah, it's it's been enjoyable. Retirement was, was very nice after 42 years of just not thinking about what happens next. And I get to a, get a kind of do things at my pace and when I want to. And um, I always tell people it's kind of like that Bachman Turner Overdrive song, taking care of business. You know, yeah, I just love to work at nothing all day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, it's so good to have you on here. Um, you know, from you. my high school career, watching you be the head coach at Blue Spring High School. I mean, um, I know you got to see me through my years of swimming and a lot yes. of people, you know, through their years mm. of swimming. So I'm yes. excited to kind of chat with you and get to know yeah. a little bit more about what's going on in your life. So I guess first sure. off, just get, tell us your story. Give us a background of you and you know, mm-hmm. what are you up to these days as well? <laughs> um, these days, I spend a lot of time uh, with the family. I just got back from uh, four days with my grandson in Illinois and uh, hanging out with Luke. He's 18 months. He's almost three foot. Um, he's got a phenomenal arch in his foot. I think he's going to be a great butterflyer like his dad. And, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to be able to teach him to swim. So that's one thing. I've got my boat. I spend a lot of time puttering around uh, with that and uh, I end up making some trips to Colorado. Um, Good. And just really, I still, I obviously still keep up with sport. I do some private coaching. Um, the pandemic was interesting. People literally couldn't get access to pools at, at one point. And in our town, they might, they got access on the Missouri side sooner than on the Kansas side. Mm-hmm. So there was a number of people, triathletes, master swimmers, et cetera, that, uh, that needed time. And, and so we tried to, to do what we could for them, give them time and, and give them some challenges and, and, uh, and, and just work with technique, um, the, the kind of a forgotten aspect sometimes. Um, but it, it's the most important thing. So I spent a little time just doing a little bit of everything. I uh, marveled uh, once again at the genius of uh, – of Eddie Reese down in Texas. I, I mean, know. Isn't that crazy? He's retiring and like moving I on. I can't believe it. I can't I know. believe it. I mean, when he got Chris back out of retirement, I just thought, okay, he'll just go and they'll just keep up in the age like <laughs> Eddie. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, definitively the best men's coach ever in the world. Mm-hmm. Bar none. I mean, the things yeah. he's done and, and He's just got such a great folksy way. I mean, when you ask him questions, well, Bill, I don't know what works on dry land. So we do a little bit of everything. <laughs> just, yeah, 
I'll never forget that at a clinic a long time ago. I just, I went, okay, that makes sense actually, you know? And we didn't really know as much then. We, we certainly know more now, but it just, he was just brutally honest. And uh, I remember at the Olympic training center, I was out there and he, uh, he was there, you know, most people would be there three to five days. And I'm talking about all we're seeing is the best coaches in the world, mm-hmm. you know, which, which many are from this country and, and three to five days are there and they would come over and make some comment like, does heart rate really matter up here at altitude? Eddie is 45 minutes into his first practice. Bill, c- could I speak to you a second? <laughs> Eddie, sure. That's why we're, that's why I'm here. I don't think I'm going to pay attention to heart rate up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you shouldn't. I mean, 45 minutes and he's, he's hit the nail on the head. I mean, it just the only guy close to as fast was Dave Marsh. You mm-hmm. know? I mean, just two of the more brilliant people in our business. So uh, I still keep up and I just, uh, I had to watch every bit of that last meet of his because uh, yeah, it's the last time we're going to see him. I know. I know. It's, it's honestly one of the craziest things. Cause one, I get to see him on a regular basis, uh, just going to conference and competing against him at our level yeah. at big 12s. And so, mm-hmm. um, and just now not going to be able to see him on deck. I know he's going to be around and whatnot, but it's not going to be right. the same, you know, Eddie, at, you know, our coaches meetings and stuff like that and, <laughs> um, raising concern or, you know, posing questions, uh, I definitely, he's going to be missed, um, oh. you know, from all aspects. And I know the time was coming. We just, I don't think all of us knew it was going to be now, um, yeah. you know, and so it's a pretty cool thing to be able to witness that. And, you know, he's going to be around. I have no doubt yeah. about that. He's going to be all over yeah. Texas still. Um, uh, but I would think. yeah, well, that's good. I'm happy you're spending yeah. time and doing things, you know, that make you happy. Um, cause that's what you should do in retirement mode. Um, you know, do the things that you probably couldn't do when you were a coach. Um, I know that our lives are very, uh, I guess we, we don't really have a lot of free time. So, um, you know, when you do get that free time, it's nice to be able to, you know, do what you want to do. So, um, I guess the other thing yeah. is, is like, tell mm-hmm. me from your start of, why you got into coaching, because I think it's so interesting to hear from other coaches because everybody has different ways of why they got into coaching and why they started where they started. So I guess, give me a little bit of background knowledge on that. Okay. Um, I graduated from a small college called Luther college up in uh, Northeast Iowa, um, small Lutheran school started by a a bunch of crazy Norwegians, of which I'm two thirds. So, um, Seemed natural, and I had a great time. I had a great high, uh, college coach, great swimming experience there. Um, <clears throat> he probably didn't have a great experience coaching me. Uh, <laughs> I was I was a character, so uh, that was the start of my having to look in the mirror and say, you know what, characters probably have character. I I don't think I ever want to get rid of those guys. I think I want to keep them around, but uh, I I. I had an extra half year because I decided just in case I didn't know how law school would work out. And I took the LSAT and my score wasn't very good for um, bluntly a white male in 1976. What It wasn't good enough for where I thought I wanted to go. So I took it again and, and took this little uh, one hour course at Iowa state, which was close to my hometown in Nevada, Iowa. And I, um, made the mistake of going over to my old club in Ames, Iowa. A good friend was coaching them while she was going to college and there had been a miscommunication back then the clubs, the the parents and the board did a lot of things. And one of the things they were supposed to do is get subs for the coaches went in this club, Ames Swimming Diving Club, when they went on vacation, she was going to go home Mm -hmm. for uh, a change instead of a week and a half, the full three week break. And so when I walked in, there was, I don't know, about 80 kids just literally running amok and going crazy and throwing the little wire baskets. They were supposed to put their clothes in. Um, 
they were going off the board sideways. They were, and I literally grabbed a couple of parents I knew, uh, one of which worked at Iowa State. I think he taught physics. I'm trying to think, but I, I think he taught physics. I grabbed him and said, Dave, what, what's happening? Where's, where's Becky? And it was, the response was, well, we don't know. <laughs> and, and right now, um, we have no sub for tonight's practice. So I'm getting ready to call it off. And I said, well, can I help? And he goes, would you be willing to stay for, I think we only had the pool that night for an hour and 15. Mm-hmm. And I said, I got an hour and 15. I'll burn for ASC, ASDC. I'll do that. Let's, let's go. I said, give me a whistle. And so I took his whistle. He was, uh, Holland, Mr. Holland was our eight and under coach and mm-hmm. was fantastic because he looked at it like, Uh, Boomer, I think, was the closest. Bill Boomer. He looked at it like, okay, I have this vessel in the water. How do I make it go faster? Mm-hmm. And so he um, spent 90%, 90%, literally 99% of his time with the eight nunners on making the vessel more streamlined through the strokes and 1% training. And as he said, Bill, they're going 25s and 50s. How much do I need? You know? Mm-hmm. And long and short of us, I blew the whistle and get over here. <laughs> they ran over and I said, Mr. Holland takes the eight and unders. I grabbed this uh, lady beside me who ended up becoming my assistant coach. Uh, her name's Lorna Volmer. I said, can you take the nine and tens? And, 12 and ups down here, 11 and ups down here. And um, I gave them a workout that I thought was probably too hard based on what I had heard about the team. And Becky telling me about her struggles to get work out of them. And I went home and told my parents, you should probably take the phone off the hook because all those professors' kids are going to be upset. I really put the wood to them. And I, so I just take the phone off the hook, old-fashioned, right? Wall yeah. phones and everything. So um, I went out with friends and came home from the cave-in, I don't know, right about closing back then. It was early back those days. And I think it was after midnight and I walked in and my dad was still up and I said, Oh God, I told you to take the phone off the hook. And he said, well, you're right. It did just stop ringing, but he said, it's not what you think. <laughs> they want to hire you. I said, I, I beat the crap out of them. They want to hire me. He goes, yeah, they said it was, the kids all said it was the best workout they've had all year. Oh so my gosh. That, that taught me something about hitting the right audience. I just did it by accident but it was something they were hungering for a little bit. So I just worked with my friend the rest of the year and we, uh, we coached together for the next year and we were fortunate the team doubled in size and then some. And um, during that time, a young first year coach named Richard Quick uh, became the head coach at Iowa nice. State for his first job. Nice. And his daughter joined our team. It was nice. He's one of the mm-hmm. great gentlemen of all time. And, um, Richard was incredibly supportive and uh, pulled me in. I was over to just, I just wanted to observe somebody like that. And um, so I went over to Iowa State and I'm watching practice. And I heard someone go, Richard, there's a phone call. And he turns around and he goes, Bill, come over here. Said, Take the 400 I Amherst. I got to aim for this. And, and I turned around, there's two guys in the water that I swam with, you know, a few short years ago. <laughs> You know, that's great and, and i i was like and, and literally one of john looks up and goes yeah take the four and average bill i said well that's coach bill to you now <laughs> so i took the four and i emers and um we had a good day and richard came out and did what richard kind of did a lot just kind of didn't step in waited till the set was over and came back over to, i said why didn't you come over? He goes, Oh, it's going good. He said, I want to I never want to interrupt the flow of a good workout ever. I, ah, that's going to be Bill Shally's coaching swimming one-on-one right there. Yes. Never interrupt the flow of a good workout or a hell of a meet. You just don't do that. So yes. that, that I got pulled in. And at a certain point I said, Richard, I just don't know how this will go here. And he says, wait a minute, I've already got something I want to tell you. They're looking for a coach at my niece's team down in Kansas City. And there's this crazy young guy named Coach Malone, and you should oh, no. really go work for him. I think you can learn a lot. I love the guy. 
I mean, that is verbatim from Richard. Yeah. And I went, well, all right then. Richard says that I'm going to go do it. So I, uh, I uh, applied and, uh, and got on with the Blazers and uh, had the good fortune to, to work with them at, at not long after uh, Coach really got it up and running. Mm-hmm. And got a, a, a good chance to start the branches at Olathe, Blue Valley, and Blue Springs. So uh, had the good fortune to meet a lot of great people like Mary Lane Camberg and Hank Cruzen and all those guys and gals. So it was, it was really a lot of fun. It was a great experience for me. But that's what got me into it. I just forgot all about the law after that. It just seemed too much. There's too much reward for me personally, seeing kids grow after it. it I mean, through the goal setting process and, and seeing them figure out, oh, this is my roadmap. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, it just it just became something of a, a passion like it does for all of us, as you know. Right. So that was that was really it. That was how I got pulled in. Bad. Hi, guys. It's Molly from The Journey. Put your comments in by May 1st for a chance to win a drawing to win one of Jeff Cummings Odd Man Out autobiography. And he signed it. Um, a Team X travel mug, as well as a $50 swim thing tube card. Now, as we always say, it's not just about the destination, it's about the journey.